Alright, so I'm making the third video here. Uh, so last time we solved kind of one of the first um, algorithms for i to 1 and then for j to i. Uh, so now we're going on to kind of a second one. So we're still keeping it in um, in this kind of like uh, n squared territory with just the two nested loops. But now we're going for uh, i 1 to n do for j 1 to n. And so this n is what's different this time now. It's um they're both going to n rather than j only going up to i. So again, if we do our direct translation, I guess if we think about this on the side again, what we're going to have is if n, um, let's say if n is 3, we're going to start with i equals 1, and then we're going to get j equals 1, and then we're going to have x plus plus, x plus plus, uh, sorry, then j equals 2, x plus plus, j equals 3, x plus plus, i equals 2, j equals 1, x plus plus, 2, x plus plus, j equals 3, x plus plus, and so on and so forth. You can kind of see the pattern already um, for every i. We've got 3 plus 3 plus 3, etc., um, all the way up to n. So since n, in this case, is 3, it's going to be 3 sets of 3, which is going to be 3 squared, which kind of makes sense. It's going to be the classic n squared, because it is two perfectly nested loops, just in the same way as for i to n is n. For i to n, j to n is going to be exactly n squared. But I still like going through it, because that that kind of logicking it out only gets you so far when they start getting more complex. So I'm going to keep doing it the exact same way we've been doing these previous ones. So let's convert it first to our sum algorithm for i equals 1 to n. Do, let's nest our second sum here for j equals 1 to n this time. Do, and then just do the 1. And this is our cost function given an input size n. So, this time we've still got 1 here, uh, and the j equals 1 there, and so we'll use the formula that we saw before when calculating out for 1. So here we have i equals 1 to n of, this becomes n minus 1 plus 1, which I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out here, is just n. So now we get to kind of a different place, because this time we aren't stuck in the in a classic um, sum notation. Uh, we're in a little bit of a different notation, but there is totally a rule that helps us out here, and it's a rule that uh, gets used really quite a lot. So I'm going to... Um, actually, no, I might even change color just to show it. Let's use like a light blue or something. Um, so the rule that we're going to use here, and I'll copy it down exactly uh, from the notes so that it doesn't look different if you're looking at it. Um, and it's the very first rule. We have sum of u i equals l, which is the usual, and that's an l, not a 1, of c a subscript i is equal to c, ah, that's a hideous sigma, sum from u i equals l to a of i. And this looks uh, more complicated than it is, but basically c is any constant that doesn't depend on i, and a is a constant that does depend on i. So I guess like a, a practical example of this would be um, hypothetical if we had you know, uh, from i equals 1 to n of 3 times i, that this is exactly the same as 3 outside of i equals 1 to n of i. And so now that this is in that classic formula we have, we can say that that's equal to 3 out, uh, kind of out, whoa, I didn't know I could do that with those little pen things, sorry. 3 outside of and outside of 
and plus one on two, and that would kind of suddenly be our kind of expanding that out. And this all this rule kind of makes perfect sense if you think about what it's actually doing. So in this case, three times i, let's say i equals three. Um, in the first iteration, this is going to expand out to one times three plus two times three plus three times three. That's kind of what this notation is, is going to look like if we actually expand it out. And just using the rules of factoring stuff, what we can do is take the three out the front and those two are the same. Um, so obviously if we kind of follow this through to conclusion, here we have three plus six plus nine, which is going to equal what, 18, um, is exactly the same as three times one plus two plus three is six, which equals 18. So by taking the three out the front, by kind of factoring it like this, um, we can take any term that's not dependent on i, even though this is 3i, the 3 itself is just being multiplied by i every time. It's not, it's not an i. Um, so, coming all the way back across to our, uh, to our actual algorithm here, and moving back to white to show that, um, n, even though it's not a constant, it's a variable, it doesn't depend on i. It, it has no bearing on this iterator, which means what we can actually do is take it out the front as if it was a constant. So that is actually equal to n outside of i to the 1, whoops, i equals 1, 2n of, and so what's left here is just 1, right? So n times 1, you can kind of put as many 1s there as you like. And so this formula, which we've already used just up above and like three times now, uh, is equal to n times n minus l plus 1, um, in this case l is 1, what i starts as, minus 1 plus 1, uh, which pretty obviously is just n dot n, which equals l n squared, which is exactly kind of intuitively what we expected this to be. So that belongs to the case of, in fact, is exactly uh, g of n squared which is super unsurprising, and that kind of perfectly lines up with our expectations of how we kind of reasoned it out here, um, obviously with an i, with the third batch here for i equals 3. Um, but doing it this notation where you, where you take this and relate it directly into some notation where you can then apply this whole set of rules um, and always end up at the answer scales much better as the problems get harder.